The threat of the Lazarus Storms has come to an end, but the evil of Devil Neza still lives on inside Batman. What will happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman vs. Robin issue number 5. The grand finale of this Mark Wade series and the epilogue to the Lazarus Planet event. What will happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So then, as we join this new story, we're actually treated to a page-long recap of everything that happened in the main Lazarus Planet event. And I mean, really, the fact that you can fit everything that happened in that story in one page should tell you a lot. The long and short of it is, of course, that Devil Neza tried to manipulate Damien and the rest of the Bat family into fighting Batman so he could steal the world's magic and in turn use it to defeat his own son, King Firebolt. King Firebolt, in an attempt to kill his father, ended up causing a massive explosion on Lazarus Island, which in turn caused all the Lazarus storms. Which led to Lazarus Rain, which led to like a dozen different tie-in anthology stories where maybe one to two are actually going to be important later. Also, at some point during all of these events, a bit of Devil Neza's soul imprinted on Batman and vice versa, thanks to Lazarus Resin. Batman mutated into a weird demon Batman and helped everyone win the fight with King Firebull, and then everyone just kind of stopped paying attention until right now. It would seem now that Devil Neza is completely in control of Batman's body, and he teleports him and Damien back to the Bat Cave. It's also here Wade starts to do a little bit of light retconning, like, hey, wasn't there a whole super team with Batman when he got possessed by Devil Devil Neza, uh, yes, but he beat them all up. And now he's holding Damien hostage, forcing him to take him to wherever his son King Firebull is being held, because, well, he still wants to kick his son's ass and prove he's the best. Even though, up until now, everything he did with stealing Earth's magic was just to try and defeat his son, but his son got defeated anyway, so he really has no motivation to do anything right now, but we wouldn't have a story if he didn't suddenly decide this is what he wants to do now. Which, I guess half-baked plans really do run in the family, because King Firebull got introduced like an issue before Lazarus Planet was the main villain for only two issues and then was and was swiftly defeated after just kind of out of nowhere declaring that he wanted to control the Lazarus Storms for himself. You may also notice here that in this final issue of Batman vs. Robin, Mark Waid has basically flipped the script on everything we've seen before. Now it's Damien trying to save a mind-controlled Batman. Robin makes a daring escape from the Bat Cave, and we actually get a pretty cool little chase scene where in Devil Nest goes after Robin by possessing the Batmobile, but not just any Batmobile, the Morrison-era Batmobile, aka the Batmobile that Robin himself probably feels the most actual connection and kinship with. It's a nice little touch in a story that's lacking in many nice little touches. It's around here, too, Damien ends up running into Monkey Prince, the Gene Lu and Yang character who was kind of all over Lazarus Planet in the lead-up because his father, the Monkey King, actually has a really shared history with Devil Neza when they were younger, because they all technically draw their power from ancient Chinese mysticism, and I think Wade is just a fan of Gene Lu and Yang like the rest of us and wanted to kind of boost his book. Apparently, Monkey Prince stuck around at the Hall of Justice, and because of that, he was the only other person to discover that Batman was possessed by Devil Neza. Oh, geez, that sure was convenient, wasn't it? And he's here to deliver the bad news now that the longer the Devil Neza lives inside Batman's body, the stronger he'll actually become. No, don't ask me how that's possible, how a magical being grows more powerful in the body of a guy who normally eschews all things magical. It just is, okay? We need to raise the stakes because this is the final issue of this comic and the epilogue of Lazarus Planet. The only way we could possibly ratchet up the drama even higher is to say that the only way that Damien will be able to defeat the Devil Neza is by killing his father, Batman. Oh, and then they say the only way that they can defeat the Devil Neza is by killing Batman. Which, yeah, okay, I mean, I guess it makes sense thematically because Mark Waid has really been playing with this idea that the Devil Neza and King Firebull's family dysfunction is itself a reflection of Damien and Bruce's own father's son dysfunction. And it now looks like despite how hard they try to fight it, that history will repeat itself again with son killing father. But I mean really though, does anyone think for an actual second that they're really honestly gonna have Robin kill Batman? No, I didn't think so. But okay, at least this is gonna lead to a big action-packed finale, right, where Robin is gonna have to get really clever in bringing down his possessed father and mentor, and well, yeah, here's the thing about that, Mark Wade just decides that the best course of action would be to literally repeat a scene that we saw earlier on in the series. By having Damien reuse the same idea he used when he was under Devil Neza's control by getting Nightwing and Batgirl and Red Hood and all the other Bat sidekicks to attack Batman first and wear him down. Only, you know, this time it's totally different because, uh, Cassandra is here this time. Yeah, see, totally changed it up. Ah, uh, yeah, 
totally different. Well, okay, they do one thing kind of sort of different. You see Damien actually borrows some of Monkey Prince's magic power and goes all shadow clone jutsu on Devil Batman by creating a series of Damien clones to rush them all at once. And believe it or not, this isn't even the most anime thing in this book so far, but we'll get to that in a minute. With Devil Batman thoroughly beaten down, Damien plays his other card he's been keeping up his sleeve, and that is a bunch of the other DC magical characters who have had their powers returned to them thanks to Black Alice. They bring with them the Devil Neza's dormant body, and you think, oh, okay, we're gonna have some sort of crazy reverse exorcism, right, to get the soul out of one body and into another? And yeah, they get the Devil Neza's soul out of Batman, but apparently that also kills Batman anyway. Well, they say it exhausts his life force, but really, I mean, if it flaps like a bat and it squawks like a bat, call it a bat. Naturally, Damien blames himself right here, saying that there was so much more he could have done in this situation, and if it means that Batman will live, Damien is willing to give up his own life force so that Batman can be resurrected, saying that the world needs him more. Only, as we learn from the Enchantress, this isn't one of those equivalent exchange kind of things. One soul doesn't equal one lost soul. Hell, every member of the Bat family could give up a little bit of their soul and it still wouldn't be enough to bring Batman back from the brink. They would need so many people willing to give of themselves all at once to make this sort of magic ritual work. Luckily, with the help of Oracle, Damien is able to take over the Gotham airwaves and make his case to the entire city. Damien says that Batman has always been there for them, fighting the good fight, protecting them from evil, uplifting them. But that now, Batman needs the help of the people of Gotham more than ever. He needs you to give him your energy, everyone. Seriously, did Mark Wade become like a late-in-life anime fan? Because this is totally a Goku spirit bomb moment. This plan ends up totally working, and we get a splash page of all the first responders, and the teachers, and the bricklayers, and the bakers, and the candlestick makers of Gotham, all giving selflessly of themselves with a rallying cry of I am Batman, which, man, again, I'm totally having a flashback here. Didn't Scott Snyder do, like, this exact same thing in the New 52? Only when he did it, it was metaphorical, and here it is very, very much literal. Well, regardless, it works. Batman lives again, meaning that the dynamic duo are finally reunited, all their hatchets buried, all their bad blood set aside, and ready to take on the world once again. And so that was Batman vs. Robin, issue number five, everyone, the grand finale of this Mark Wade series, and honestly, as much as I hate to say it, I was really disappointed by this conclusion, especially because I really liked this series when it started. Shockingly, sticking a whole event near the end of the proceedings didn't really help anything, and the ending we actually did get was pretty damn bland and paint by numbers. Devil Neza's ultimate plot is pretty nonsensical, and he ended up being a real nothing villain, but at least he was better than King Fireball, who, like I said, got introduced only to be defeated in his next appearance. The worst part, too, is that there was really nowhere for the characters to go at the end of this story. Batman's not himself for, like, 99% of it, and by that point, him and Robin had already reunited and worked out their problems and reconciled, so basically, this final issue is just them marking time until the end, and that's what it felt like, marking time until it was all over. A real shame, too. If nothing else, I think Batman versus Robin will stand as a testament to how important a good, impactful ending is to your story. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 5 out of 10. There's nothing horribly wrong about it. I didn't feel stupid for reading it. I just felt like this one could have been so much more than it actually ended hey there, up being. Everyone. Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.